since we have replicates, the missing data can be taken care of and GeneX handles this seamlessly. To start the pre-processing, click the pre-processing pre button in the data editor menu. A drop-down menu appears with the correct sequence of normalization or correction operations necessary for obtaining accu accurate results. Depending on your experimental design, some of the operations may be optional, but they should in any case be activated in a sequential order from top to bottom. In our case, we start by doing an efficiency correction. We assume that the qPCR efficiencies have been determined determined at an earlier stage using a standard curve or such. In GeneX we have the option of applying different efficiency correction to different genes. Let's assume that the efficiency for the market gene was determined to 90 percent. Uh, we deselect the reference gene and apply the efficiency correction by clicking here. As you see, the correct gene has its data indicated with a yellow background to help us keep track of which correction that has been applied. Next we select the reference gene and assume that its efficiency was determined to 95%. We could deselect the marker gene, but it's not necessary because GeneX keeps track of which gene has been corrected and does not apply a correction twice. Apply the correction to the reference gene and we are done with the efficiency correction. Next we want to normalize to sample amount. Clicking the normalize to sample amount item in the pre-processing drop-down menu brings out a simple window where we choose the column that contains our sample amount information. In our case this is the column indicated by hash RNA. Apply the correction. Notice that the hash RNA column is removed as the correction is applied. This is another way that GeneX helps us keep track of which correction that has been applied. Now it's time to normalize using interplate calibrators. To normalize with interplate calibrators, you need to define which samples that belong to each plate and their corresponding interplate calibrator. Use the shift or control button to select several samples at the same time. Samples to calibrate are selected in the leftmost part of the window and the interplate calibration references are selected in the rightmost part of the window. Push the select button to register your selection. You may notice that the apply button is deactivated until all sample has been defined as either belonging to a particular interplate calibrator or at, as uh, interplate calibrator reference samples themselves. Once all the samples have been defined, click the apply button to apply the correction. By scrolling down in your datasheet, you may now notice that the interplate calibration measurements have been removed as they were corrected for. Normalization with qPCR repeats is a simple averaging of the measured replicate values. Clicking on normalize qPCR repeats in the pre-processing drop-down menu will bring down a simple window to select the appropriate classification column. Choose hash qPCR and click apply to apply the normalization. Again, notice that the hash qPCR column was removed as the correction was applied. You may also have noticed that we no longer have any missing data. The missing data were handled correctly in the averaging operation and we can proceed with a complete data set. Next we normalize our marker gene to our reference gene. In our case it's trivial, but you can be confident that GeneX can handle many target genes and several reference genes if necessary. Mark the gene to be normalized in the left hand side of the window, the reference gene in the right hand side of the window. Click Select to define the pairings and click Apply to apply the normalizations. The reference gene column disappears and the marker gene column is marked with yellow background to indicate that the normalization has been applied correctly. Now we're left with the delta CT values and the difference between the marker gene and, and the reference gene, 
within each ref, uh, reverse transcription replicate. The final normalization is to average re the reverse transcription repeats. Click Normalize RT repeats in the pre-processing drop-down menu to bring down a simple window to select the appropriate classification column. Select hash RT and click Apply to apply the reverse transcription normalization. Now we're left with the resulting delta CT values of the normalized and corrected measurements from six different biological subjects within each of the two treatments in the study. In the end, we want to make a couple of final transformations. First, we want to have our data represented as relative quantities rather than delta CT values. Here, the quantity of each sample is put in relationship to each other. The quantity of one of the samples is arbitrarily set to 1. In GeneX we have the option to set any one of the samples, the average, the minimum or the maximum, to 1. In this example I choose to set the quantities relative to the maximum. Now we have our data on linear scale and we may be ready to perform some statistical analysis on this data. However, some of the more powerful statistical tests assume that our data conforms to a normal distribution. This is generally not known in advance and it needs to be confirmed in order to use the most appropriate statistical test and to obtain the most reliable results. However, our experience is that gene expression data on logarithmic scale is more likely to conform to a normal distribution than gene expression data on a linear scale. So for this example, our final transformation is to convert our data to logarithmic scale. At last, we have our data ready for statistical analysis. To load our data into a GeneX project, click the Load to Project button. GeneX will ask you to save your data to preserve the processing that you have worked through. I call the new file Pre-Processing Tutorial. It is saved on an MDF format, which is a GeneX specific file format that is much faster to handle large data sets than, for example, Excel files. We can confirm that the data file is present in the current GeneX project by clicking on the Data File tab in the GeneX control panel. That's it for now. Thank you for listening through this tutorial on GeneX pre-processing. Look out for continuous updates and new features on the MultiD website www.multiD.se. Enjoy using GeneX. Signing off from the MultiD team with wishes for the best of luck for your real-time qPCR experiments.